And welcome everybody. Hi, I have on as a guest again today, my very good friend, Lauren Abaddon. Now, I want you to check out prior interviews, episodes with him, but he's visiting me here in Atlanta. We are at the Battle of Atlanta as a tournament, as an event. And to begin with, what's your first impression of seeing this tournament? Wow, I am so impressed with the organization, with all of the people who are attending, in spite of whatever their you know situation is, they're showing up and I've never seen such a crowd, really. And a lot of decent competitors, I'm looking forward to tonight where we see the finals. Well, what's your impression compared to when you competed back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth? <laughs> <laughs> and, and now, how, how do you view them? Do you compare them uh, as like or better, slower, faster? What's your impression? Well, I mean, different era, different way. But uh, I learned old school, which was, you know, you gotta be able to give it, take it, and move, adjust, and be, my, my thing was speed. But when I see these guys today, I mean, they're doing techniques, but I like to see beautiful technique. Even, you know, you said it, I think, before in a, a Black Belt Magazine interview, it's about form. You gotta look good while you're, doing what you're doing, you know, uh, winning, hopefully, but at least learn as you're going what you need to work on. And I see a lot of guys here who are sponsored and who are, you know, th there's all this equipment, all that stuff. When I began, it was knuckle punches, mouthpiece, groin cup, and jewelry booties. And I liked the knuckle punches because I didn't have all this foam on me and I could just go in there bang, and hit them real fast, sweep them, stomp on them, kick them in the head. And, you know, point tournaments, you still had to show the judges and the referee that you scored. So you had to hit them right. with control. What I see is a lot of, you know, the same things in the sense of judging, in the sense of coaching. I don't see how they're doing it because they don't stop, which is interesting. In the old days, they used to stop, call for points, see who, you know, get confirmation of the referee. So this is a continuous thing. And I think it's just because of all the competitors. And I think that's phenomenal. What they're doing is, is they're giving people a chance to compete in a controlled environment, which is huge as a part of growing as a martial artist and a fighter. I wanted to know if I went to the Shotokan tournament, or I went to this Mike Stone karate tournament, or I went to this Taekwondo tournament, I learned to take my patch off because I'd go to all these tournaments and I would get judged unfairly. But I wanted to see if my technique worked versus their technique. Now, I would get kicked in the groin or scoop kicked in the groin or whatever at a Kempo tournament. And I'm kicking this guy in the face and his nose is over here, his ear is bleeding, but the other guy gets the point. Okay, so it is what it is. Well, and before we carry on, let me just congratulate you. I hear through the grapevine that you just got voted in Black Belt Magazine as one of the top three martial arts kickers of all time. Yes. Congratulations, Scott Atkins, Keith Cook, and yourself. Thank you so Wonderful. much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And that's because of you and uh, others that think that I've inspired them. And I hope that's true. And I know it's true, but I hope so because I don't want to seem like <laughs> overconfident or I'm such a big guy because it's about being humble as well. So I'm so grateful. That's so true. And I have been very fortunate to have uh, started with you in a film called No Retreat, No Surrender 3. And I got a chance firsthand to watch you in action. I've also worked with Jackie Chan and some of the best fighters and kickers on the, in the country. Yes. You know, and I saw firsthand, I think it's because of your aesthetic beauty of your long legs and your power and your speed. You mentioned that, you touched on that. That's what I think is missing out there sometimes in the tournament. Yeah. I see, you know, action, power, speed, but sometimes they sacrifice technique. Those with the best technique, technique, those with the best form, actually will be the best fighters overall. Correct. You know, look at Bruce Lee's form. It was excellent. Yes. You know, yes. and so you must have proper technique to have proper form. So congratulations, and that's wonderful. What style did you start off with? Was it a uh, Korean style? Yes, yes. I was fortunate enough to have Jun Chung Taekwondo just up the road from me on Wilshire Boulevard. So after high school, I needed something to focus on. Uh, my mother told me I couldn't join the Navy, this and that. So I found this martial arts school because I needed someone to show me how to be a man, really. And I needed something to do with my energy 
and to create more focus so I get ready for college, do this, do that. And once I walked into the dojo, the dojo, dojo, I saw this gentleman, Remy, who was an Israeli guy, run, his red belt, run from one side of the school, jump up in the air, sidekick the bag. It folded in half and then swung and hit the ceiling. I said, I want to learn how to do that. So uh, I went to the class that evening with Simon Ree. I was wearing one of these old gray sweatsuits and that you could zip up and down and the gray sweatpants. That's all we really had back then. And uh, I don't know, all of a sudden, I, was, I thought I was, I was in good shape because I was a distance runner. No, I didn't have explosive fast switch muscle. So I, I was about 40 minutes through the class. I'm starting to take off my jacket. Simon Reed is behind me zipping it up. Keep your shirt on, he says. So I signed up. Uh, after I begged my mother for the money because I'd spent all my money on books for school and everything I needed, car, gas, everything. So she gave me the money for six months and I got my uniform signed up. A couple weeks later, I was doing Gicho Young Ilbu, the first form. And Master Simon Reed, Lauren, he said, Lauren is the worst you know, person in the class. And I was like, oof. I said, he's never going to say that again. He knew exactly what to say to me and in, in what tone and in what way. Not to humiliate me, but to encourage me in that way. Let me ask you this. We interviewed a great young man named Jeff Pruitt. He broke in as a stunt fighter and then eventually made it as a star in films. How did you break into films? Well, I basically took some acting classes on a lark. I went to an acting class and I realized I didn't like the fact that I was shaking like a leaf in front of 12 people reading words on a page, on a piece of paper. So I said, okay, another challenge. Let me learn how to do this. Be calm under pressure. It'll help me with public speaking. It'll help me with my life, you know, whatever I do. And uh, so sure enough, a year and a half later, after I'd come back from Africa with my father, uh, I was broke, I was living at home. I was trying to sell used cars at Claude Short Dodge. I hadn't sold a one. I was at the karate studio. Phone rings, producer from Hong Kong. And I went to Hong Kong. Now, Jeff and his wonderful, incredible wife, uh, you know, they're familiar with the Hong Kong way. I just got thrown into it. Now, Jeff, I, you know, we, we definitely crossed paths, but we never met until this weekend. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of amazing, um, but you know, great respect. I mean, the guy is amazing. Sophie is amazing, but he's the guy who knows how to lead people, how to do things safely, how to do everything the right way so that people go home. Now, sometimes in stunting, which I've done and did later in my 40s so that I could be a single dad and also take care of other things, uh, it's so important. I went back to the stunt department and they were like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I need a job, you know? And here I am. Now, 61, here at the Battle of Atlanta with Jeff Pruitt and with all of these great martial artists. And that's what I said in this other expo. I said, I've always gone back to Taekwondo. I've always gone back to my roots. So that's, I'm so grateful that I'm a martial artist and I'm in a group of elite men. Well, here's my last question for you. We also interviewed today, uh, an aspiring stunt lady and actress. Her name is Haley Glass. Okay. And she's a fantastic martial artist, you know, world champion. She's just now graduated, graduating from college. She's ending her tournament career. And she's gonna break into films and, you know, aspire to be an actress or a stunt person. Uh -huh. What advice would you give her? Or anyone else out there listening to this about breaking into films? Well, I guess it's a matter of your discipline. You already have discipline because you're involved in martial arts. So her ability to focus and to and her goal orientation, she will learn how to find out what she needs to do. And it's about showing up, but then what you know. And stunt fighting or fighting for film, totally different than fighting, you know, for real, as it were, in a controlled environment. You have to sell the shot. So when, you know, you got to sell it, right? And you've got to be able to hit your mark. You've got to be able to do this. And you've got to do a combination and series of eight to 20 moves without hurting anybody within this certain blocking and framework, hit your mark. And you know, if you have to take one, you have to take one. But that's the beauty of it is that all that training came into play. 
and the disciplines are what keep me going. It's amazing. So my advice is, is learn as many different skills as you can and be very good at each one. You will eventually find a specialty, okay? And it could be high falls, it could be this, it could be that, it, whatever, and then you might be able to double people. You might be able to do this or that. You've got to put the work in. I know there's tons of people that would hustle me on sets and hustle the stunt department, whatever. They knew me from the movies, so they knew I could do it. But I still had to show them that I was willing to hit the ground, I was willing to do this and stay in that lane. So it's, it's a process. And so what I say to you is learn as much as you can, train as hard as you can, and then be ready to hit the ground. I see a lot of people, you know, oh, they're doing great kicks and stuff like that. Well, you're gonna be the guy who gets hit and flies out of screen if you're a stunt person most of the time. And you gotta take direction, you know, know how to keep people safe, know that you're not, they'll know that you're not going to hit the star. That's why I would fight with Jennifer Garner, double people fight with all these movie stars and TV stars because they know I have great control. So that's all I can say is just work hard. Who's one of the greatest actors you've ever worked with in martial arts? Oh, one of the greatest actors. One of them. I mean, and one of them. You, you actually wow. starred with him in a film. Keep going. Oh, you mean Keith Vitale? Yes, that's oh, the person yeah, I said. that guy. Yeah. That, listen, My blood brother. All that of be, course. All that will be cut out, but I just want to... <laughs> I just want to no, thank, it won't. No, it won't. I just want to thank you so much for, for being on the show today. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> you got it, buddy. I love you.